Hiya folks, before I get started I want to say that I'm still looking for a lawyer who knows something about intellectual property issues. Contrary to what some people were guessing on the comments section, I am not trying to sue anybody. Uh, I am being targeted by a, some organization who I think are probably scam artists, but I'm not sure if they're scam artists and I want a lawyer to help me sort that out. So if you want to contact me, the address is on the screen if you are or if you know somebody who knows something about intellectual property stuff and is a lawyer. Yesterday when I was looking up stuff to talk about Dogen and dreams, I mostly was looking on at books but I googled a little bit and during the Google search I, I came up with something not related to that but a, a discussion on a Reddit page about Dogen which I barely, I sort of knew those existed, but I'd never looked at one before. <laughs> it's sort of fascinating to read these nerds arguing about Dogen. But it was about whether Dogen believed in life after death or not, and they pointed to this uh, this uh, chapter in Chobogenzo called Hotsubodai Shin, which is uh, an aspiration for the mind of enlightenment, or awakening, or however you want to put it. And they pulled out this quote, which uh, they said supported their idea that uh, Dogen believed in life after death. And let me read it to you. This is the Nishijima Cross translation. They had some other translation, which I was not familiar with, but it's pretty much the same. Uh, Dogen says, In sum, we pass from living existence into middle existence, and from middle existence into the next living existence. All things move in a continuous process, kashana by kashana, which is a, a very small amount of time. Uh, Thus, regardless of our own intentions and led by past behavior, the cycle of life and death continues without stopping for a single kashana, which is a tiny, tiny moment, which is what I want to talk about really in this video. Uh, the Tanahashi uh, translation is, th that one's sort of, you know, maybe life after deathy. The Tanahashi translation is even more, even less life after deathy than, than that. Tanahashi gives us, from the present existence you reach an intermediary existence, and from an intermediary existence you reach a future existence, passing through moment by moment. In this way, beyond your intention, you pass through birth and death, driven by your karma without stopping even for a moment. That's not what I want to talk about, though. But just uh, the kind of interesting aside, or I don't know, I thought vaguely interesting aside, it's definitely less definite than the version that Dogen gives us in, uh, what's it called, uh, Doshin, which I've talked about before, the uh, mind of the way, in which he goes through the whole process. Uh, but he does reference it one other time that I've forgotten about. But <laughs> what is more interesting to me is what Nishima Roshi brings out of this particular passage. And let me read you his introduction. One point is that this chapter includes a presentation of the theory of momentary appearance and disappearance of the universe. Uh, Nishima Roshi puts that in quotes and capitalizes all the words. He used to say that a lot, so it's. I think this title of the theory is pretty much his own invention, but it, it's a good one. I think it's useful. The theory of momentary appearance and disappearance of the universe. In Buddhist theory, action is esteemed highly. When we consider the meaning of life, we can consider that our life is just a series of moments of action. Why do we say that our life is momentary? Because once we have done an act, we can never return to the past to undo it. At the same time, we can never perform an act until its time comes to the present. So an act is always done just at the moment of the present. Furthermore, the moment of the present is cut off from the moment immediately before it and the moment immediately after it, because we can never act in the past and we can never act in the future. According to Buddhist theory, then, our life is momentary and the whole universe appears and disappears at every moment. This theory, also known as the theory of instantaneousness, is important in resolving the conflict between human freedom and the law of cause and effect. Or in other words, uh, determinism and free will. That's another way to put it. That, uh, that is free will versus determinism. Oh, he says it right here. Uh, in this chapter, Master Dogen explains this theory. And, and I will read you the part in which, I mean, he does, he says a lot about that throughout this chapter, but I'll read you the most sort of salient part that uh, that really gets to the heart of it, because look, I marked it off sometime, I don't know when, years and years ago probably, I marked it off in the book. Because mind and real dharmas are both beyond subject 
object combination and causelessness. That's a kind of, uh, it was about tetralogy or something like that. It's something that, that uh, Nagarjuna did a lot, that, that little subject object combination and causeless, it, it making four, uh, four uh, points. If we establish this Bodhi mind for a single kshana, kshana is a very small moment, and let's see how he says it. Yeah, he just says moment or instant, but we'll get into details about that. The myriad dharmas will all become promoting conditions, uh, that is, the circumstances that are favorable to the attainment of the truth, that's what the footnote says. In general, establishment of the mind and attainment of the truth rely upon the instantaneous arising and vanishing of all things. If all things did not arise and vanish instantaneously, bad done in the previous instant could not depart. If bad done in the previous instant had not yet departed, good in the next instant could not be realized in the present. Only the Tathagata, that's the Buddha, knows the length of this instant. That's the kshana that we've been talking about. It sounds like a sneeze. The teaching that mind can produce one word of speech at a time and speech can produce one word of writing at a time, which is a reference to some old sutra and it doesn't really matter, is also of the Tathagata alone. It is beyond the ability of other states. In roughly the time it takes a man to click his fingers, there are 65 kshanas. can't really click with my left hand, but there you go. In each of which the five aggregates arise and vanish. And remember, the five aggregates are form, feeling, perceptions, impulses, consciousness. That is what a human is said to be made of in Buddhist terms. There's no immortal soul. There's just the five skandhas. So the five skandhas arise and vanish 65 times in the length of time it takes to click your fingers. But no common man has ever sensed or known it. Even common men have known the length of a tatkashana, and a tatkashana is, uh, let's see, a different unit of measurement that is 120 kshanas. So about a second, I guess. Maybe. Uh, in the passing of one day and one night, there are 6,400,099,980 kashanas. Says it very exactly. In each of which all five aggregates arise and vanish, but common men never sense or know it. Because they do not sense or know it, they do not establish the bodhi mind, the mind that seeks enlightenment. Those who do not know the Buddha Dharma and do not believe the Buddha Dharma do not believe the principle of instantaneous arising and vanishing. One who clarifies the Tathagata's Buddha's right Dharma I treasury, that's Shobo Genzo, and the fine mind of Nirvana inevitably believes this principle of instantaneous arising and vanishing. The whole chapter is kind of fascinating because it's full of a lot of metaphysical stuff that Dogen doesn't really get into, and the Nishijima Cross version once again smokes the competition. <laughs> I really, it annoys me that uh, people don't reference this version uh, as much as they should. Stephen Hine came out with a real nice book about uh, Dogen just this year, or last year, I guess, in which he doesn't reference, he, he, he puts it in the bibliography, but when he references Shobo Genzo, he references other versions, not the best version. I don't know why. But this is definitely the best version, because in the footnotes, it goes into all kinds of detail about all those little metaphysical things that he comes up with. But the main idea is this idea of the instantaneousness of the universe, and this is the one sort of metaphysical claim uh, I don't know if it's a claim. It's the one sort of metaphysical thing. Hi, Ziggy, what do you want? He's making a metaphysical claim to me right now. That uh, Nishima Roshi, my teacher, talked about a lot. He talked about the instantaneous arising and vanishing of the moment. Now he just, Ziggy just grabbed something from behind me and ran away with it. And I think he wants me to chase him to get it, but... I, I don't know. Maybe I'll chase him after I finish the video. Anyway, it's the one thing that he talked about a lot in terms of metaphysics, in terms of, I don't know if it's metaphysics is the right word, in terms of like the, the way the universe works, is this instantaneous arising and passing of the moment. And I always remember that 65 times in that length of time, you appear and disappear, and the whole universe appears and disappears, like, like that. Uh, that is one of the strongest ideas that Dogen puts across uh, in terms of how this universe works, and um, 
you know, they don't get too metaphysical in the Zen stream, but that's one thing they do a lot. And I thought I'd just present it here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I thought it was sort of an interesting thing to just give you to chew on in a video. And again, if you, you want more of this, talk to me in the comments section or send me an email and I'll do more of this stuff. I think it's interesting. And what I'm probably going to do with it is it sort of fits in with the theme of the book that I've been writing for the past year or so. And I'm going to see if I can construct a chapter and slide it into the existing chapter somewhere about that chapter, that Hotsu Bodaishin, Arousing Aspiration for Enlightenment chapter, because it does go into a lot of the weird metaphysical stuff, which I think is interesting. Maybe not that relevant? I don't know. Sometimes I think, I don't know if this is all relevant or, or really matters in the great scheme of things, but it's interesting to know, and it kind of helps frame things in a way that's different from the way normal people frame things in life. And if you start framing things in in your mind in a certain way, the, the way Dogen advises, the way a lot of other people advise, then life gets a bit easier. You get a little less heavier on, on yourself and a little less fearful of the future and regretful of the past and, and, and holding on to a sense of personal self. All of that is very freeing if you start to look at it a different way. And that is what I think the intellectual side or the metaphysical side, if you will, of Zen is useful for. So, there you go. Anyway, if you want to donate to me being more metaphysical, <laughs> there goes Ziggy again, and, and to Ziggy getting fed, you can send a donation my way via the URL that you're seeing below, which will take you to my PayPal and Patreon links, which are the only way I'm making money at all these days. Well, I have to admit, occasionally I get a book royalty check. Like I said the other day, I got $133 last week. So, you know, it's uh, it's rolling in there. Uh, but uh, really, my main source of income is you guys donating. If you're having financial trouble or something like that, don't donate to me because I'm hanging in there and it's okay. But the reason I'm hanging in there is because so many of you do donate. So thank you very much for that. Have a good time all the time. See you later. Bye.